Welcome to today's Live Better class. And today's class is about forgiveness. And we're starting off that we're saying that forgiveness is a wise and a healthy decision. So someone might say, well, Tom, you know, you're at a mental health center. Why would you have to be talking about forgiveness? And my response to that is, in my experience, over these last almost four, four decades of experience is that forgiveness is a very important topic when it comes to our physical health as well as our mental health. That when we take a look at a good, good bit of research, when we see people who are suffering with PTSD, bipolar disorder, depression, anxiety, that quite frequently there are They've been injured, they've been hurt by someone else in the course of their life, and they've held on to that. And by holding on to that and holding on to that resentment, it has made worse or exacerbated their bipolar disorder, their PTSD, their anxiety, their depression, their substance abuse. And that one of the things that's important for them to start to heal up and get better is to get over that resentment and to start to forgive and let go and move on with their life. We see a lot of the same research with patients with physical illness, people who experience stroke, uh, cancer, heart disease, other illnesses, other chronic illnesses. Um, you can, with all those illnesses, both in terms of what might cause the heart disease or the stroke, a lot of, a lot of rage, a lot of repressed anger or ongoing resentment. Uh, that, that can either cause some illnesses or it makes it harder for someone to recover. I know in the group therapy that I did for many years at the largest hospital here in Reno, Nevada, with patients who had a heart attack and they did group therapy with me, part of their healing was to learn to forgive and let go. So forgiveness is very much about having a good heart, a good solid heart in terms of physical illness as well as mental illness. So that's why we're talking about forgiveness today, because in this class, we want to support you in having a good life, in, in living a healthy life. And forgiveness and letting go of resentments is one of those topics that we're always confronted with when we say, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy. Now, what do I need to do? And one of those things we need to do is, I need to identify who am I still mad at? Who do I still resent? because that resentment or being mad at somebody, it's really toxic. It's toxic, it poisons us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and socially. And so to stop poisoning ourselves, we need the anecdote. And that's what Dr. Sid and Suzanne Simon in their book, Forgiveness, Making Peace with Your Past and Moving On with Your Life, that's exactly what they talk about, is that by forgiving, we're making peace with our past, and we're moving on with our life. And by doing that, by forgiving, making peace with our past and letting go and moving on, we are reducing our suffering. And I know we're all in favor of that, how we're in favor of more happiness and less suffering. Now, the paradigm, of course, that by which we are going to walk through this is based on the ACT paradigm that you've seen in so many of the classes that we've done. And of course, the bluebird of happiness designates and is symbolic of the inner desire and capability that we all have to really want to be healthy and happy. And all of us are very, very, uh, very much wanting that and we can achieve that in our lives. However, another thing that's important in being happy is to realize that every person who is happy also has had pain in their lives. And if we're going to be happy, we need to accept the fact of life that sometimes we're going to be in pain. And sometimes that pain is caused by being hurt by other people. And to get over that, to get back to happiness and through the pain and not to suffer, we're going to need 
we're going to need to forgive. Now, another symbol here, of course, is the pair of glasses. So in today's class, we're going to be talking about getting a new pair of glasses, which means getting a new perspective. Maybe some new perspectives about the way we look at ourselves, the way we look at other people, about this whole idea about forgiveness. I hope maybe you might learn one or two new things today about what forgiveness is and, and what it isn't. Now, we also have as a symbol, of course, the beach ball. And we talk in ACT Therapy that a lot of times when life is painful, we don't want to deal with it, so we push that beach ball underwater, huh? And it takes so much energy day after day after day to avoid really, really dealing with life, huh? To keep pushing that stuff. So with ACT Therapy, by being mindful and just letting our thoughts and feelings come up, we let the beach ball come up and we say, okay, this might be difficult or this might be painful, but I can deal with this. I'm, I've been suppressing this. I've been avoiding this long enough. It's eating my lunch. It's hurting me physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and socially. I need to deal with this. Now, as I'm saying this, you know, I've taught this, this class for many, many years. And I know that as we talk about forgiveness in, the, in this class, typically, you, you may have some thoughts and feelings come up where you've been hurt by your dad or your mom or your brother, or your sister, or a spouse or a former spouse or a child or a stepchild or a friend or a former best friend or a coach or someone who's hurt you. And you might have some strong feelings come up. And so if they do start to come up, just do some deep breathing and acknowledge them. It's like, wow, I'm having a, a really strong feeling right now of hurt or pain or resentment or fear or whatever it is about my mom or my dad or my brother or my sister, whoever it was, when they hurt me and I'm still feeling that. And that's okay for that to come up, you guys. Part of this healing process is knowing that I need to be able to let this come up. Now, I've taught this class, again, really to thousands of people over the years, a lot of times to healthcare professionals. There's a marriage and family therapist in the community who has been in so much pain when I give this talk to nurses and psychologists and doctors and social workers, twice he has gotten up and walked out of my class. The first time he slammed down on the table and just walked off really angry. And the second time he got up in the middle of the class and he yelled at me. And he said, whoever hurts you, what have you had to forgive? And then he stormed out of the class and so it became obvious to me that something has happened in this guy's life that as we were talking about forgiveness, he certainly had some really strong thoughts and feelings come up where someone has re really hurt him. And I hope that over the years that somehow he's found the ability to deal with that because he's probably pressed that stuff underwater like we have for a lot of years. So if you feel some stuff coming up today, that's only natural and it's normal. Take a few deep breaths and identify what it is. And if it's really strong and after class you feel like you need to talk with your service coordinator, your psychologist, your doctor, your friend, your sponsor, your priest, minister, rabbi, whomever, if you need to talk to somebody about what's coming up for you, please do that, okay? Now, as these thoughts and feelings come up, the other symbol that we have is the Chinese finger trap, huh? And we've talked about how when difficult or painful things come up, rather than try to escape them, because when we try to escape them, we actually trap ourselves. What we need to do is lean into it and accept it. Just lean into it, accept it, and then that's what frees us. And today's class is about how forgiveness can free us up. It can free us from the past. It can free us from our suffering, free us from our resentment also can free us from our shame. <clears throat> so once we're accomplishing that, then what do we do? One, two, three up here. One, two, three. You remember that? One, two, three. What that means is we then focus on our values. What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of a life do I want to live? And that's what we give our time and energy to. We realize, don't we, when we stop and think about resentment and how much time we spend we talked about this also in the anxiety class and the depression class about negative pessimistic ruminating thoughts. 
negative, pessimistic, ruminating thoughts. And that's really what a resentment is. And so, so what we're doing is by forgiving, we're freeing up our mind of those negative, pessimistic, ruminating thoughts. And then our energy and our creativity can go toward living the kind of life and being the kind of person that we really want to be. So today's class is really about living a more vital life and living a more meaningful life. So I'm talking about getting in touch with our deeper wisdom, not knee-jerk reacting according to our, what feelings come up, but acknowledging those feelings and then asking ourselves, what's behind that? What's behind that anger? What's behind that fear? What's underneath that hurt? Identifying that and then beginning to say, I need to deal with this because this has been kind of haunting me. It affects my self-esteem. It affects my relationships. It affects my sleep. Maybe sometimes I relapse with alcohol or drugs. So our wisdom tells us that, that we need to really take a good look at this. So let's jump into this then. And on the second page, you can see down at the bottom, there's a list. These are the 17 ways that us human beings, that we human beings harm one another. So in this class, what we're looking at is if we've been hurt badly and we've held on to a resentment, probably someone has done one of these 17 things. And so we want to identify that to see maybe what's been going on inside of us and what happened, what led to these strong feelings that we have. Number one, of course, we are obviously, as human beings, we are hurt if we trust someone and someone betrays that trust, huh? A best friend, a spouse, a child, someone that we're vulnerable with, we expose ourselves and they betray us. Ow, oh, that hurts, huh? Now, when we're, when we're up to date with, what, with our lives, and if it happened today, we would let that beach ball come up and we would deal with it. But maybe we're dealing with feelings have to do with betrayal of trust that go back five years or 10 years or 15 years. And, and it's really like a wound, a wound that's never healed. So today's class is about identifying these wounds and then moving. What about if someone broke a promise to us? Sometimes that can hurt, huh? Or if someone deceives us, they fake us out. They lead us into believing something that's not true and that has negative effects in our life. If someone abuses us, either mentally or emotionally or physically or sexually, and if we've pushed that hurt underwater as part of the healing process, and maybe we've said, oh, I'm never going to talk to anybody about this. That's a secret that's going to die with me. We want to, part of our healing process is allow us to, to bring that up and face it, first of all, ourselves, and then find someone who's, who's trustworthy and respectful and knowledgeable like a psychotherapist, a counselor, a service coordinator, a doctor, a priest, minister, rabbi, a sponsor, someone that we can be vulnerable with and to share this, share this with them. That helps us achieve a catharsis. It will also help us get some perspective on, on what we need to be doing now with the rest of our lives. Maybe we've been neglected. Number six, maybe someone gossiped about us and really tore us down with our family or friends or with our colleagues. Or maybe someone slandered us, where, where someone was telling lies about us, again, to family or friends, and it damaged our self-image or it damaged our standing or damaged our relationships. Number eight, maybe we shared a confidence with someone and we, we asked them, don't tell anybody else. We believed that they wouldn't tell anybody else because it was something really private but then they went and told someone else or they told a bunch of other people. Number nine, maybe we lived in a, in, a, in a toxic environment. Maybe we grew up in a toxic home life or a, fa or a toxic work life. And that toxicity really harmed us physically, mentally, emotionally. So that's a harm that we might have. Or school environment. A lot of times school environments can be very injurious to 
to children and teenagers and even college students. Maybe someone has just been flat out mean to us or they've been cruel. There's a lot, we've seen a lot in the last couple of years about bullying, huh? Maybe on the playground, maybe in school, and again, maybe it's grade school or even college or even graduate school. You can be bullied even, you know, so in all, all these types of human interactions, maybe on the bus, maybe at a 12-step group, maybe at church, we can be bullied. Somebody can be mean to us and that hurts. How do we deal with that? Do we hold on to that? Or do we learn to, to forgive and let go? Maybe someone manipulated us or maybe they exploited us. We were young, we were naive, we were trusting, and somebody exploited us. Number 12, maybe someone stole from us. Number 13, someone humiliated us. Or they, re <coughs> or they, re or they were disrespectful to us. Maybe someone was unfair. And of course, as we're going through this, you're kind of checking this off, right? You're checking this off and say, has this happened with me? And how am I doing? Have I, have I let that go? And am I free from this? Or is that kind of still sticking to me? Or is that still kind of like wound me or cut me? Huh? So maybe someone was unfair to us. Maybe there were false accusations. Someone accused us falsely. And it had some damage to our self-esteem or our relationships, our career our love life. <coughs> Number 16, maybe someone put down our beliefs. That's called denigrating someone's beliefs. They put us down because of something we believed in philosophically or religiously or politically. Something that was really important to us and we really believed in it. And someone just put us down for how, you know, how stupid can you be? What kind of an idiot believes in and then fill in the blank? And then lastly, number 17, maybe someone violated your privacy when you were a little child or a teenager or as an adult. Someone read your journal, your diary, someone got into your cell phone, got into your email. Someone listened to a conversation you were having. Someone read some letters where your, your privacy, your private life was violated. These are probably like the top 17 ways that that we can be hurt as human beings. And probably all of us have been hurt here in this room, probably five or six or seven of these ways at least by the time we're 25 or 30. Uh, and some of them very profoundly, like, like that therapist that was in the class and, and stormed out of my class twice. Probably he was hurt like this very deeply. So now if you've identified one or two or three or more of these ways where you've been harmed, Let's get into the solution. Let's take a look at, well, what do I do about it? If I've been harmed and I'm having these really hurt feelings, what can I do about it? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to, we want to come to a better understanding of what forgiveness is and what it isn't, okay? So, if you take a look at the third paragraph here, it said forgiveness is not. That's a whole paragraph. It, it talks about what forgiveness is not. And this is so important because a lot of times when I bring up in a therapy session or a class, the idea of forgiveness, sometimes people's first reaction is there's no way I'm forgiving somebody. And I'll say, wait, whoa, whoa. I, I know your reaction, that's normal. But let's, let's take a look at this first before you decide that you're not willing to forgive. So if we, if we decide to forgive someone, you guys, forgiveness is not forgetting what happened. It's also not giving up or giving in. If we forgive someone, we're not condoning their behavior. We're not saying you really hurt me terribly, but I forgive you and it's okay, it's no big deal. That's not what forgiveness is. We're not talking about this. But if we decide to forgive someone, we're not condoning their behavior. We're also not overlooking it. Another thing that's important to know is that forgiveness is not reconciliation. A lot of times if we, for, we think if we forgive somebody, that means we have to be best friends or we have to let them move in with us or we have to invite them to Thanksgiving dinner, 
No, 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 no. For, we, we can forgive someone and we may never speak to them again. We don't have to go back to somebody and tell them, I forgive you. Forgiveness is something that happens internally. It's a decision we make inside of ourselves where we, we acknowledge what happened, how we were hurt. We make a decision to forgive them and then we work through this process and then we let go of it and we move on with our lives. But sometimes we're resistant because we're, we're afraid that if we forgive someone, that means we have to be best friends or we have to marry that person again or something like that. So this is important. Forgiveness is not a feeling. A lot of us grew up or we have grown up thinking that forgiveness is a feeling, that I'll know I've forgiven someone when I feel it. But actually the opposite is true. And that is when, when we realize that non-forgiveness is really hurting me and I don't want to keep poisoning myself. So how do I get better? And then someone like me says, well, you need to make a decision to forgive your dad, forgive your mom, forgive your brother, your sister, your ex-spouse. The key word is decision. You need to make a decision to forgive them. So this is the way it goes, you guys. It's a process. And the process of forgiveness starts with I am deciding to forgive so-and-so for what they did to me, okay? So the feelings may be not there yet. Maybe the feeling is you really hurt me and I'm really mad at you. And we still might say, I'm never going to forgive you. I'm never going to let this go. I'm not going to forget this. Maybe that's what we're feeling and thinking. But then we're talking about wisdom, huh? Our wise mind says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't want to keep doing that routine. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. We say, you know what? I've been saying I'll forgive them when I feel like it, and it's been 20 years now. So what we do instead is our wisdom now tells us what a wise person does is decides, I am going to forgive my dad for what he did to me. I am going to forgive my mom for what she did to me. I am going to forgive my brother, my sister, my do you see there's a decision there? It starts with a decision. It doesn't start with a feeling, you guys. The feelings come later after we've gone through this process, which we're going to go through. But we start off, even though we might be gritting our teeth, I am willing to forgive so-and-so for what they did to me. Why? Because I want to get better. I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I'm tired of suffering. I want to move on with my life. That's why I'm willing to do this. It has nothing to do with the other person. It has to do with where I'm living in my head and in my heart. So the decision to forgive is a decision to let go. It's a decision to move on. It's also a decision to no longer be a victim. Because as long as we continue to give that person power, and when we hold a resentment, toward our dad or our mom or our football coach for 20 or 30 years, they still have power over us. So it's actually sometimes, like from the work that I did 40 years ago on Skid Row in Detroit, on Skid Row in Detroit, you were looked at as being weak if you forgave someone. It's like an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth if you're a strong person. But what I understand is that that's the way of weakness. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is weakness. And then it takes a really strong person to forgive. And you have to have a strong mind to realize, I want to be healthy and happy. And if I want that, my wise mind is telling me I'm willing to forgive. So, so we make a decision. And when we do that, see, we're no longer a victim. As long as we resent that person, we're a victim. And they have power over us because they're still living in our head at 2 o'clock in the morning, huh? So deciding to forgive them is taking our power back and we're no longer a victim. Down about two-thirds of the way, you guys. So making this decision to forgive is making a decision to be healthy. It's making a decision to say, I'm not, I don't want to be controlled by the past. I don't want to see myself as a victim. It's also knowing, you know what, I'm imperfect. And I need to be forgiven for mistakes that I've made. 
So maybe I'm really mad at my dad for mistakes that he made and I've resented him, but gosh, I certainly don't want my kids mad at me for mistakes that I've made. And, and you know, we, we, get, we get back what we put out, huh? So if I would like my children to forgive me for the mistakes I've made, or my spouse to forgive me, or my friends or brothers and sisters to forgive me, if I'm going to be able to get that and receive that, I need to be willing to forgive them. That's like the cycle of forgiveness. And, and if I'm not willing to forgive other people, how can I expect that I can forgive myself? Or how can I expect that other people would forgive me? So forgiveness is a path to freedom, as Dr. Robert Enright talks about at the bottom down here. And that it affects us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and socially. So let's go ahead now, you guys, and look at this process. So you're maybe deciding about, okay, you've, you've remembered one or two people who might have hurt you maybe, and maybe you have a resentment against them, and maybe you're saying, okay, I guess I'm willing to take a look at this. How can I move forward and be healthy and happy? So this is this page in the, in the bottom of this page, and the bottom of the second page is the, is the process. It's the steps that we go through. So the first thing we want to do is, how would my life be better if I forgave so-and-so? If I forgave my dad or my mom or my coach or my teacher or my classmates or my spouse or my child or my steps, how would my life be better physically? How would it be better mentally? How would it be better emotionally? How would my relationship health be better? One of the things that I will tell people when I'm doing marriage counseling and they're very resentful toward each other and maybe they're thinking about divorce and I'll share with them, I don't know if you're going to continue to stay together, but I will share with you, it's really important for you in your life that you get this worked out in terms of forgiving each other because if you don't, you're going to carry that baggage into your next relationship and it's going to mess up your next marriage. And I'll share with them that in our culture, 50% of marriages end in divorce, but 60% but 60 of second marriages end in divorce. So why is that? It's because people have been mad at each other, they don't forgive each other, they don't work it through, and they carry that baggage into their next relationship. So question number one, how would my life be better if I forgave? Let's go ahead and turn the page now, you guys. So the next thing we want to take a look at is we're going to just start off with one person at a time. So think about this. Who is one person that I need or want to forgive? Now, some people, when they do this, maybe the person that they, that's hurt them the most or the situation. By the way, it could be an institution, too, that's hurt you. You know, like the military or a school or a church institution or a mental health institution. So it might be an institution that we're needing to forgive, too. So sometimes when people start to tackle this, you guys, sometimes the, the person that, or the institution that's hurt them the most that's who they want to start off with. They say, I'm going to go big. I want to get rid of this big one. And that's okay, too, if that's what they decide they want to do. Sometimes people say, you know what? I've been hurt by, by many people several times, and I'm going to ease into this. I'm just going to take one, one simple one, one that's kind of easy, and just practice. And so whatever way you want to do, if you want to do a big one or a medium one or a small one, just to start to practice and do this process. So think about that right now. Who's someone that you need to forgive so you can be healthier? You can move on with your life. You get, everybody got that? Okay. The next question is, what happened? You write about here on the front, and then on the back, you can keep writing on the back. Write it all out. What happened when you got hurt, when you were betrayed, or when you were exploited, or when you were gossiped about, or when you were abandoned, when you were rejected, when you were abused. What happened? Write it all out. Get it out. We talked earlier about pushing that beach ball underwater, huh? So writing it all out 
is, is letting that beach ball come up and learning that we can tolerate these difficult feelings if, to get well. We're willing to feel this pain to get well. We're willing to feel this pain so we don't suffer anymore. So we write that out. What happened? Then the next question is, how do I feel toward that person today or toward that institution today? Am I still angry at them? Am I resentful? Am I afraid of them? Am I, am I ashamed of myself? Do I feel sad? Do I feel a sense of revenge? Am I confused? Am I disappointed? W what's going on? Am I, how's my relationship with them today? This next question is really a difficult one, but it's important that we do that. You know, there's that little saying about before you judge a person, walk a mile in their shoes. Huh? You've all heard that, right? Most of you. Before you judge a person, walk a mile in their shoes. So one of the things we have to do as part of this process, and again, that's why, especially when we're dealing with pain that really goes deep and it really hurts, that's why it's really helpful to have a, have a therapist or a mentor or a spiritual director, someone that we can really trust and someone we can walk through because th these are not easy things to confront. So as you can see, that question is, I'm not going to condone what that person did, but I want to have empathy for them. We say, what was going on with them when they did that? What was going on with my spouse when they had an affair? What was going on with my dad when he treated me that way? What was going on with my mom when she treated my brothers and my sisters that way? What was going on with my son or my daughter when they treated us that way? What was going on with my boss when they treated me this way, or my teacher, or my friend? It, again, we're not writing this out to help make excuses for them or to condone what they did, but just so we can kind of understand and actually kind of soften our heart a little bit. Not that we're going to let them off the hook. They're still responsible for what they did. And if they come to their right mind, they still need to make amends to us for what they did. But we want to ask ourselves, what was going on with them when they did this? And when we can remember how much pressure our dad was under or that our mom had a mental illness and she was off her meds and she'd relapsed with alcohol or drugs or that our brother was, you know, getting, um, uh, he just got cut from the football team or our sister just got rejected by her third boyfriend in a, in a row and so she was really mean or the football coach was going through a divorce or it was a losing season and he hated being a loser so he treated us all really bad. So no excuses, but it kind of helps to know what was going on with this person that, and again, we don't always know. We don't have to make anything up, but if we kind of know what was going on, it will soften our heart and soften our head in a good sense to do that. Number six, now this is a hard question too. This is a hard question too. And the question is, did I have any role in this in getting hurt. Gosh, that's a hard one to take a look at. Now, obviously some things happen where we're just victims. When I say that, I think about many years ago in a treatment program where I was a therapist, there was a woman who came in and she was really battered and bruised still. And after class, I talked with her and I found out that um, she had she worked at a casino. She'd gotten off work like at five in the morning. She walked out back in, in an alley and somebody had a stick and just beat the heck out of her and, and took her purse and stole it. And so, you know, she ended up in the hospital and beaten, battered and bruised and she had PTSD and depression, and anxiety. And so we were there to help her as best we could. But it was obvious this person was just a victim. They just leave work. She's working, she's a single mom. She's trying to support her family. She walks out the door and somebody walks up and beats the heck out of her and steals her purse. She was just a victim, right? But other times things happen to us where we're not just a victim, we participated in getting hurt. So like with a married couple, like when I'm, so stop and think about that for a minute. Do, do you think that maybe there's a possibility 
when you were hurt that maybe you played a role in this. And this is not to beat ourselves up. And this is, some of us make the mistake of taking full responsibility for what happened, and that's not true, and I don't want you to do that. But like as an example, like when a married couple will come to me and someone's had an affair, and let's say it's the woman that's had the affair and the guy is really ticked off and he's really mad and he can't trust her and he's GPS in her cell phone and wants to know where she's at all the time. And at some point in time in therapy, I'll need to talk with him and say, you know, you played a role in this. You know, you're, I know you're hurt because your wife had an affair. And, and your wife, you know, as we've talked, we've talked with her, she needs to take full responsibility for her behavior. But you know, sir, you need to take a look at your role in this because she's saying you were never there, you work 16 hours a day, you didn't listen to her, you put her down, you disempowered her and that she never had any money, had no control over the money, and et cetera, et cetera. So I say, do you see where you helped set up the context where your wife went looking for love in all the wrong places? Not to absolve, she's responsible for hers, but I'll tell him, she, you're not just a victim here, sir. You need to take a look at your own behavior. And the same thing happens in other relationships too. I'm just using that as a, but is that kind of clear, you guys? How, you know, no, now again, there's that woman that walked out the door and got beat up and got her purse stolen. But there are a good number of hurts that occur where we co-created that environment. We should have walked away from the relationship a long time ago. We should have reported our boss a long time ago. We should have confronted our son or our daughter for how they were treating us or how we noticed that money was going missing out of the drawer in the kitchen a long time ago. But we didn't do that. We let it go on. We let it go on. So we need to identify what was my role in this. Number six, how did I contribute to getting hurt? Number seven, what resources do I need? Do I need a therapist to help me go through this? Do I need a service coordinator, a psychologist, a doctor, a spiritual mentor? Do I need to pray? Do I need to journal? Do I need to meditate? Do I need to learn to meditate? Do I need to go to more classes? Do I need to buy some books? You can see I have a list here of some really good books and most of these books are available um, at the library. You can take them out for free or you can get on Amazon and some of these books, they tend to be a little bit older and maybe they're a dollar or two with like a $3.29 handling charge. So for five bucks, you can get a really good book on forgiveness. That would be a good resource to learn more about. And then number eight, and this is something we talk about quite frequently in our classes. And that is that bad things do happen to good people. And when we're taking a look at being hurt and we're taking a look at needing to forgive, what we want to understand is that, that pain happens in everybody's life and bad things happen to good people. And we're all good people here. And some bad things have been done to us. Now the question is, what do I want to do with that? Do I want to, do I want to dwell on that and stew on that? Or do I want to use that as something to make me stronger? Like, the great philosopher Nietzsche said, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger. Do I want to say, you know what, I'm going to use this to make me stronger. And I'm going to grow from this. Like as an example, I can remember Oprah a couple times in her life, she said that. She said, I'm going to use this to make me stronger. And she has. So what, what that means is we have a perspective that when bad things happen to good people, we say, ouch, that really hurts. I hate that. I don't like the way this feels, but then we let the beach ball come up, the thoughts and feelings, and we, we accept it for what it is. We get the resources to deal with it, we deal with it, and then what happens is we become wiser and we become stronger. And we start to become an even greater and more positive force for good in the world because we're people who have greater wisdom and greater compassion because we've been hurt. And it's people that have been hurt and work through it. Those are the people that have deep compassion and deep understanding and wisdom and can be there for other people who are hurting. So that's what number eight says. What, what have I learned about this experience? What have I learned about myself 
And what have I learned about life? So we've now gone through this basic handout about if we've been hurt and we realize we've been holding it in, that by holding it in, it's poisoning us. And we've all agreed, I need to do something about this. This is, this is making my depression worse. This is making my anxiety worse. This is not helping me get over my PTSD. This is part of my relapsing with alcohol and drugs. This is part of my heart disease or why I keep smoking so much. Or maybe why I had a stroke because I was so rageful. So I need to get into this process. I need to forgive. So as we've gone through this class, I want to ask you to identify now as we're wrapping up, can you identify one thing that we talked about today that you say, yeah, you know what? I can use that in my life. You know, that thing in here that Tom was talking about, that really made sense to me. And I'm going to use that in my life to be wiser and stronger. We can say, I'm either going to use that in my life to help me, or maybe we've said, you know what, there's someone else in my life that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see them this week and I'm going to share them with them instead of listening to them bemoan over and over again their resentment and their hurt and their sadness and that broken record. It's like, you know what, I'm going to talk to my friend or my mom or my dad about this and maybe help them have some freedom and help them be healthier and happier. So as always, it's been great spending time with you guys. It's always a real honor to spend this time with you. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Take good care.